Good morning. Good morning to both of you. Uh, yes, uh, we have very good results uh, this uh, quarter and we see falling prices, but this is also due to more energy uh, coming. It's a reduction in, in demand, but it's a kind of balancing the energy trilemma, as you, you mentioned, because we need to make sure that we have energy security, energy coming particularly from, uh, from Norway, and we need also have more energy affordability. At the same time, over time, we are making sure that the energy are more and more uh, sustainable. So this is exactly what we are working with uh, these days. Anders, to a man and woman, the analysts I've been looking at, and I've been looking at all the big ones that you look at as well, they got it wrong. They said we were going to be $90, $100, $110, and then they said, oh, it's all about second-half demand, and it's all going to be about the winter. And now they're all rowing back very aggressively as well. What's the outlook from your point of view? Well, it's so many parameters that plays into particularly the gas prices and uh, kind of the, 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 what we're monitoring very closely to try to understand the, the market is, is obviously the weather. Uh, the weather will affect uh, the renewable production, uh, but it will also affect the demand both in the heating season and also in the cooling uh, season. Uh, Europe is, is in a place now where it needs more um, uh, gas, and this needs to come from uh, LNG, global energy, which is a competition. And the competition here is really also about, you know, the economic uh, return in, in Asia and so on. So it's extremely many parameters that this is playing in. Uh, what we are focusing on is to make sure that we are able to produce as much gas and oil as possible when it's uh, needed, have high uh, operational performance. This is what we can uh, really affect. Uh, and the, for the quarter, we had uh, very, very good, solid results all across uh, the platform um, and the organization, meaning that we were able to have an uh, increase in both oil and gas production. Anders, it's a big day for the central bank today, the ECB deciding on whether to lift interest rates in, in Europe for the Eurozone. But at this point, it is battling inflation as well as slowing growth. As you look at the numbers and the level of demand, is there any indication that we are heading into much slower economic conditions? Well, uh, this is really what uh, the market is faring. We saw that uh, actually a couple of days ago when the, when job numbers came from U.S. and this has a, a huge impact on the in the oil price base based on really kind of is this really slowing down the uh, the, the economy? We pay a lot of uh, you know attention to this. Uh, we see that uh, you know also for us uh, the inflation is affecting our cost numbers. So ob obviously uh, this will affect both the cost for our company but also the future demand of the oil and gas. Uh, so uh, we pay a lot of interest to this, uh, this development. Anders, let me ask you about um, how the map is being redrawn here. Obviously, um, the Ukraine war has um, persuaded some buyers to uh, in engage with Russia and others um, obviously do not because of the sanctions. And then we've got the re-emergence of China here, the rebound from COVID. Your thoughts welcome ultimately on how strong the rebound looks and um, alongside that, what the redrawing of this uh, map means going forward. Well, we see at the moment that the uh, economic return in China after COVID is, is, is coming, but the kind of the big uncertainty is kind of how long uh, and how far, you know, will this uh, and kind of a longer term growth in, in China be, be. And that really affects also the, the long term demand for, for oil, oil and also uh, LNG. We see a lot of Russian oil coming into the Asian uh, um, market. We see LNG coming in from Qatar and, and US. So it's kind of, I think everything, you know, all the flow of oil and gas in the world is actually now changing uh, these, uh, these days. We're drawing a new map. Uh, for 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 this, so it's uh, that's why it's so volatile. The market is very fragile market with very volatile prices, and I think we can expect that also going uh, uh, forward. But the underlying uh, for both the gas market and the oil market is that there is very little spare capacity, and so it's always an upward pressure uh, on the oil and gas prices.